I'm talking today to Victor Buller, who is a documentary filmmaker who's made a documentary called The Beautiful Game about football in Africa. Victor, tell me about the stories that are in this documentary. The Beautiful Game takes six main stories, of, uh, each featuring an incredible character who's using football to lift either themselves up or their communities up. It takes these six stories and interweaves them with sound bites from some of the most famous Africans. Leaders such as Kofi Annan and Desmond Tutu, players such as JJ Okocha and Roger Miller. And it, it just shows the power of football across Africa. And originally this was a film that was going to be made around the World Cup. Why did you choose not to include the World Cup? We realised at a certain point that the World Cup was a, was a great moment in time, but ultimately football has a longer legacy and an existing legacy and still is evolving in Africa. And these stories um, are not connected to a particular time or date. They're, they're evergreen in a way. They're happening now, they're happening all across Africa, and they're examples of really the resilience and resourcefulness of Africans. So give me an example of one of the stories. Well, the first person we meet in the, in the film is a, a guy named Ima. We meet him when he's 14 years old. And he's uh, a part of the Right to Dream Academy in Ghana. He's been selected to be a part of this academy. And not only that, he's been selected to have, get a scholarship to a high school in Santa Barbara, California. And so one of the great things about The Beautiful Game is that it, uh, over four years, we follow Ima as he leaves the academy and says goodbye, his fam for his, says goodbye to his family, which um, is an emotional scene. And then he adapts and adjusts to America. And one of the nicest moments of the film is in the end when he wins the award for being the best soccer player, high school soccer player in America, which is a big award. And you, from a completely different perspective, you, you also focus on a woman fan in Cote d'Ivoire. So what happens? What's, what's all that part of the story about? Well, another one of the characters we focus on, focus on is Suzanne. And Suzanne's kind of an amazing woman who helped form a women's supporters group. Um, Football and the peace process are very connected in, in the Ivory Coast. And Suzanne lost a lot of her family in the Civil War. And her ways of coping is she uh, formed this women's supporters group and she goes to the stands and she basically supports the, uh, the national team uh, called the Elephants. And the Elephants played a very special role, uh, as you may know, in the peace process because when they qualified for the World Cup, Didier Drogba and the rest of the team uh, got a world national television and they got on their knees in the dressing room and prayed for the war to end. And this appeal really had an impact. And Suzanne uh, tells us the story and we hear from Kolo Toure and Yaya Toure and Emmanuel Boué who are all in the locker room as well. And we see those scenes from the locker room. It's really an emotional, very affecting uh, moment in the film. So what's your next film going to be about? Well, my next film is called A Whole Lot More and it's about a um, uh, maker of car parts outside of uh, Detroit, Michigan, in Toledo, Ohio, just uh, 45 minutes south. Um, and what's very special about this particular place of work is that uh, it's entirely staffed by people with intellectual disabilities. So my uh, next film uh, follows a year in the life, uh, in a way after the factory loses their contract with Ford, how they cope and survive and uh, progress from there. The documentary The Beautiful Game will be released when and... Yeah. Well, look out for the beautiful game really across the world in 2013. We're very excited. Uh, we're going to have screenings uh, certainly in, in Europe, in America, um, and definitely Africa. Uh, and which countries in Africa have you arranged so far? Well, we've already made plans for screenings in South Africa, Nigeria, and Ghana. But we really hope that we'll be able to screen the film across the continent, uh, especially at a certain point, being able to give the film to uh, free TV there, so ordinary Africa. Uh, even without cable subscriptions can see the film. Victor, thanks for talking to me today. Thanks a lot.